Hello everyone and welcome back to my Warhammer 40k guides. I am Brady and today I would like to talk about when you should be competitive and when you shouldn't be competitive when playing Warhammer 40k. Since Warhammer 40k is not like other competitive games like online gaming like Starcraft or even games like Magic the Gathering. Lately I've been thinking about this a lot and figured I would give some advice to you guys and gals who want to play competitively so this way you can have your fun but ensure that your opponents are enjoying the game as well because this will only help our community grow which is something I believe we all want. Warhammer 40k is a great game, but unlike other games that can be played competitively, Warhammer 40k is also a hobby, and an expensive and time consuming hobby at that. For example, if you want to play Magic the Gathering competitively, you just have to buy a deck that you looked up on the internet and buy some card sleeves so you don't ruin your cards, and other than practicing with your deck you're pretty much good to go. Sure the deck was probably expensive if you bought some new or top tier cards, but there really isn't any work involved to just play the game competitively other than buying the cards and putting them into card sleeves. In Warhammer 40k however, if you want to play competitively, you can also netlist a good army and go out and buy the stuff for it. But then you also need to build your models which requires a lot of glue and a lot of time, and then you also need to buy paints and brushes, and then you need to paint all of your models which can be extremely time consuming, especially if you aren't good at it, or if you don't have expensive tools like an airbrush to make your job easier. This means there is far more work and effort that needs to be put into even just playing the game, let alone playing the game competitively, at least when you compare Warhammer 40k to other games that can be played competitively like Magic the Gathering. So when speaking about competitive, and how the meta changes so often as well, it's much harder to keep up in Warhammer 40k as it would be for some games like Magic the Gathering. And because Warhammer 40k is so heavily tied into the hobby aspect of the game and the lore of the 40k universe, it's kind of a weird game to try and get people to play competitively. Most people who play 40k don't play lists that go against the lore of the 40k universe, because they have invested a lot of their time into reading books from the Black Library or even stories in each codex. And most people want to take their time painting their army to look nice and unique because they enjoy the hobby aspect of Warhammer 40k. This doesn't mean that the game can't be played competitively or even at a high level, but what I'm trying to get at is that most people in the hobby are playing the game because of their love of the lore and because they enjoy the hobby side of Warhammer 40k. These players just enjoy painting their models from their favorite stories and playing with them on the tabletop despite them being suboptimal in the tabletop game. This group of players is by far the largest group in our community, and I would say they look at the game as a hobby first and a tabletop game second, and their primary goal when playing the tabletop game is to have fun. Then there is another group of players that is much much smaller by comparison, and these players look at Warhammer 40k as a tabletop game first and then as a hobby second, and their primary goal when playing the tabletop game is to win, making them the exact opposites of the players I previously described. These are the players who optimize their lists and spam the best units, and make armies that some would say go against the fluff or the lore of the game strictly for the purposes of making a strong tabletop army. Basically these players treat the game like Magic the Gathering. Sure there is lore and fluff in Magic the Gathering as well, but the majority of the players in that game go for the best cards and combos to have the best chance at winning the card game, instead of making decks that are based off of the lore of the Magic the Gathering universe. As you guys can probably tell, I fit into this category since I enjoy playing Warhammer 40k like it's Magic the Gathering, and I enjoy optimizing my builds and my play. And I assume a lot of my viewers do as well since my channel is based on competitive Warhammer 40k and it seems to be growing. There is nothing wrong with either of these groups of players in my opinion. The game is meant to be for fun, and these groups have different ways of having fun. Some people have fun playing their fluffy armies and their favorite units and just enjoy rolling dice, while other players have fun competing and trying to be the best. Again, I believe there is nothing wrong with either of these mindsets, everyone can enjoy the game the way they want to. The one problem that does arise from this though, is when these two types of players meet for a game. If both players try to play the game the way they want to and enjoy, then most likely at least one person is going to leave that game upset. Either the hobby player because all they were able to do was pick up dead models all game, or because they didn't enjoy seeing the opponent's army that went against the lore of Warhammer 40k, and sometimes even the competitive player gets upset because the game wasn't challenging and didn't give them the competition they were looking for. More often than not though, at least in my experience, it's the narrative or hobby player that leaves the game with a sour taste in their mouth, since at least the competitive player gets part of what they enjoy, which is the win. With all of that said, now let's get into story time since I haven't really done anything anecdotal in a while, and I know some of my viewers enjoy my stories. I also think this story in particular helps shows my point that I'm trying to get across, which is that even if you enjoy playing competitively, you shouldn't be aiming to play competitively all the time if the people you play against don't share the same mindset. So, story time. 
The vast majority of people in my local club fit into the hobby or narrative category that I mentioned, and in the beginning of my Warhammer 40k journey, I did as well. I was once a casual player who just wanted to play with my favorite models and have fun like most people, but eventually something happened that inspired me to become a competitive player. After about 8 or 9 months of being in the hobby and playing for fun, I ended up playing against a competitive player who was what some of you would call a whack or win at all costs player. Long story short, this was 7th edition and he was playing Eldar jet bike spam with Wraith Knights while I was playing Corn Demons and Chaos Space Marines and the game didn't go so well. In fact, I didn't even kill or wound a single model of his and I was tabled by turn 4. I was a little bit upset by this since to be honest it wasn't very fun putting models on the table just to take them off again. But because of that game I was inspired. I decided that my new main goal in Warhammer 40k was to become good enough to beat that player. This doesn't mean I wasn't trying to have fun anymore because I did aim to have fun every game. I just had the overall goal of improving my list building and my play so that one day I could beat the competitive player who beat me. So I started looking up tournament results to see if some armies used the units that I owned, and I tried to make a budget list based off of the tournament results with my Chaos Army. I purchased a couple new units but mainly tried to work with what I had and just tried to improve on playing the game instead of improving my army with new and optimal units. I then practiced against other people in my club to prepare to one day beat the competitive player and for the most part everything was fine. Myself and my opponents enjoyed our game since I wasn't overly competitive and because my list wasn't super strong so I had some close games that were enjoyable for everyone since again most of the players in my club are narrative or casual players who don't necessarily enjoy hyper competitive armies or games. I eventually played the competitive player again about 6 months later and although the game was much closer he still pulled out the win. So after that I went in even harder with practice and making a stronger list. I stopped caring about fluff and now tried to optimize my list as much as possible instead of playing with my favorite units, so I would even use combinations of units that didn't make sense fluff wise just to optimize my army. So I actually went out and bought brand new units just to make a stronger army, to the point where I basically had a brand new army and it didn't look the same as my old one. This led to my practice games not going so well in a sense. Sure, I would win all my practice games and was something at like a 95% win rate over 60 games, but now I noticed that the people I played against for practice wouldn't respond to me anymore when I messaged them through the club's website to ask for a game. I didn't realize that I had now become the competitive player that I was trying to beat, and that a lot of people in my community didn't enjoy playing against that type of player or playing the game that way. Eventually, I did end up beating the competitive player about a year later after 8th edition arrived. But it was at the cost of turning into a player just like him and losing out on people to play with because most of my local community didn't enjoy the game that way. Eventually, it got to a point where only a few players were actually willing to play me because even if it was meant to be a casual game that was meant for fun, I would always bring my competitive list and go full tryhard because for me, that was fun. I did this not realizing that not everyone wants to play games like that and that some people just want to play with their favorite miniatures and roll dice just like I used to do before I became hyper competitive. Originally I assumed because I was inspired to become a competitive player in order to beat the player that demolished me that everyone I played against would feel the same way and get inspired as well. And I could possibly turn my community into being a competitive focused community so that way I could get better practice so one day I could go to large events like ITC majors and hopefully do well there. Instead it had the opposite effect and I was turned into the black sheep of my local community that not very many people wanted to play against unless their goal was to play competitively and we shared a similar mindset towards the game. So the moral of the story is, pick your battles and know your opponent and your community. If you know the person you're going to play against doesn't enjoy competitive, then maybe don't bring your tryhard list and instead just have some fun rolling dice. One benefit of this is you can use models that have been collecting dust since they aren't optimal. And another benefit is that your community won't end up disliking you or branding you as that guy, especially if your community is more narrative or casual focused. If you know the person you're going to play against enjoys competitive and wants to practice for a tournament or something, then go all out. Bring your tryhard list and play to win since you'll both enjoy it that way. I wish I had someone tell me this advice a year ago before I upset a bunch of people and made a bunch of people in my local club dislike me for being so competitive. This is why I'm making this video, in hopes that I can save some of you guys and gals from making the same mistake and alienating yourself from your playgroup if your playgroup consists of mostly players who just want to have fun. You should always be aiming to have both players enjoy the game you are playing, so depending on what your opponent wants, then go with that. Now with that said, Let's talk about being competitive at tournaments, since I think this is kind of a big deal. I think even at tournaments you can soften up a bit if you notice your opponent's army isn't optimal or if they seem like a new player. 
You don't want to stop someone so bad that they never want to participate in future tournaments. And if you truly are a skilled player with a good army, you don't need to do stuff like calling them out for moving their models half an inch too far, or if they forget to use a spell in their psychic phase and stuff like that. Be a little more lenient on the newer and more casual players to make sure at least they have some fun as well and that they may want to attend future tournaments. The only time I think that the line is drawn is when you are doing well at a tournament. Let's say you have two wins and zero losses and in the third round you're playing for either first, second, or third place because it's a three round tournament. Then by all means, I believe you should call your opponent out when they want to try to go back to the psychic phase after already shooting their units. Because in the later rounds of the tournament, I believe there should be no excuses for making mistakes and the person who plays better should win, which includes remembering all of your rules and doing them at the correct times. Especially when it's against another player who is doing just as well as you at the tournament and when there's prizes on the line. But again, in casual games and in early rounds of the tournament, then just consider your opponent and how they feel, and maybe try to make the game fun for everyone. Because if you don't, then the player might not show up for the next tournament. And you and the community will only suffer because of it, because then the following tournament will have a smaller turnout, and the following tournament after that will be even smaller, until eventually there is only a handful of competitive players left, which might not even make the tournament worth running anymore. With that said, if your local club has more competitive players than casual players, then this shouldn't really be an issue, since everyone will enjoy the challenge and the tryhard mentality. And you should still have decent turnouts to your events since your community enjoys playing that type of game. So like I said earlier, just know your community and how they enjoy the game. Also, if you're a TO or a tournament organizer and know that your community enjoys casual play more than competitive and you don't want hyper competitive players in your event, or at least not playing at a hyper competitive level, then maybe host campaigns or narrative events instead of tournaments. Or if your mind is set on having a tournament, then maybe use a host rule like only one faction per army if the majority of your community would rather play that way. Or make the tournament free with a very small prize, so that way the competitive players don't have that much incentive for tryharding, and instead might just bring some fun lists to mess around with and have fun. But if you are going to give a big enough incentive for people to win, so like for example a $100 prize for first place, you are going to bring out competitive players who want to win. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people get their enjoyment from 40k by competing at their best and trying to win especially if they have the incentive to. And with that said, if you are a casual player or a narrative player and you decide to go to a tournament that has a big prize on the line, then be prepared to play against competitive people in competitive lists. Sure, it can be discouraging if you get destroyed every game by competitive players, but that's what a tournament is for. It's a competition of the tabletop game. It's not a narrative event or a campaign, which are normally just played for fun. It's a tabletop game competition, and that's really the only thing that us competitive players have. That's why we're called competitive players. We enjoy competition. Getting upset at a person trying to compete in a competition just sounds silly to me. It's understandable to get upset if someone tryhards in a narrative campaign or even casual games, but at a tournament with big prizes on the line, it's really the only thing us competitive players have, so please don't take that away from us or make us feel bad for wanting to compete or wanting to win. So like how I said, competitive players should adjust their mindset when going into a casual environment, or even when playing in early rounds of a tournament if they notice that they're against a player that's not really that competitive then I think the hobby and narrative players should do the same and allow the competitive players to be competitive in a competitive environment. I say competitive a lot. But it's a give and take really, it makes it fair for everyone. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope I was able to help some of you guys and gals with this video so that you can better expand your local communities and so that people don't get discouraged from playing the way that they want to. And I hope that my perspective might allow you to see from both sides of the spectrum and maybe helps you understand that people enjoy this game in different ways. And I don't think anyone should get upset with anyone else just because they enjoy the game in a different way than they do. Let's all get along and have some fun rolling dice and making the community a great place who accepts everyone in the way people want to play. So with that said, thanks for watching this video, and if you made it this far, don't forget to check out the channel sponsors, TheMagnetBaron.com and 95 Miniature Painting on Instagram. I will have a link for each of them in the description. Thanks again for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Happy Wargaming.